Interpol Secretary General is in Davos saying it's a chance to get the chief executives engaged with global security threats. Jürgen Stock joins me now. Good to see you, uh, sir. Thanks for having me on the programme. As uh, now, the biggest threat, I think, at the moment, at least, I mean, besides the usual range of money laundering and, and nefarious deeds, has to be cyber security, uh, malware, whether from governments or cr other criminals. I mean, Interpol is um, dealing with cybercrime, and cybercrime is now entering, uh, if I may say, in a new dimension. We are discussing here in Davos the fourth industrial revolution, which comes with huge opportunities uh, for our societies and economies. But there is a dark side of the fourth industrial revolution, and that's the, certainly the development of cybercrime, which is entering into a new dimension, and uh, it's going to, be, to become even more dramatic in the do future. You, do you see a part of Interpol's role to also investigate, for example, those allegations of meddling and interfering in elections, referenda, the, or uh, state-sponsored cybercrime? No, definitely not. This is not Interpol's turf. Our turf is cybercrime, traditional cybercrime, cyber-enabled crime. That's uh, the way where we try to provide a platform for under our 192 member countries and provide the capabilities and the technology they need to successfully investigate this kind of crime, which is definitely comes with uh, completely new challenges for law enforcement globally. Uh, and on that, of course, let's take Bitcoin. Bitcoin scams, some of which come from Ukraine, some come from Russia, some in South Korea. We, they're, they're, they're truly global. But I always get the feeling when it comes to cyber, we're just one stage behind the criminals. They're ahead of us. Yeah, perhaps we are a little bit behind, but we are successfully in uh, investigating, for instance, in the darknet, um, which is becoming more and more a, a problem. Uh, also providing tools and services for those who are not experts and just buy the tools and services in the Internet, like a, like a botnet, like ransomware. And of have, course, you got, have you got the expertise necessary? within Interpol. Does, I mean, even national crime fighting agencies tell me, you know, they need more youngsters yeah. that have the ability to really understand this. Definitely. The job profile within police services is going to change. Uh, that's, that's true. And it's also true that many of our member countries are struggling with uh. lacking basic capabilities uh, and well-trained and skilled stuff to investigate in, in the cyber arena. That's definitely a, a challenge where Interpol tries to close the gap in providing trainings, for instance, darknet trainings, and cooperation with the private sector is of utmost importance. We have to bring that cooperation on, on the next level more institutionalized. We need the private sector to help us in developing solutions. Choose a color. Uh, let's say green. Ah, Related to hope. Okay. In the country where I come from? Yeah. So where would you say you are on the, we are on the fracture world, uh, board? No fractures in society? Me overly fractured. That's just the middle point. You can go anywhere you like with an arrow. I, I, I like to be, to, to make my cross somewhere oh, here in the middle because I see, oh. I see a lot of opportunities coming getting up. Getting better a lot or of, getting worse? I'll, worse or better? Where's the arrow? I think, it's getting, I think it's getting better because I see huge commitment. Um, global law enforcement is united through Interpol and I see huge commitment of the private sector to more closely cooperate with. Law enforcement. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you very much for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank, Thank you.